What happened to Quicksilver Messenger Service? The band that became Quicksilver Messenger Service originally was conceived as a rock vehicle for folk singer slash songwriter Dino Valenti, author of Get Together. Living in San Francisco, Valenti had found guitarist John Cipollina and singer Jim Murray. Valenti's friend David Freeberg joined on bass, and the group was completed by the addition of drummer Greg Elmore and guitarist Gary Duncan, who had played together in a group called The Brogues. This new version of the group played its first concert performance in December 1965, playing for the Christmas party of the committee. As the band was being put together, Valenti was in prison on a drug charge, and he didn't rejoin Quicksilver until later. The band Quicksilver Messenger Service underwent various changes and developments in their early years. They added Skip Spence on guitar and rehearsed at Maddie Ballin's club, The Matrix. Ballin convinced Spence to switch instruments and join the band he was organizing, which later became Jefferson Airplane. The band's early management was handled by Ambrose Hollingworth, who later transferred it to Ron Pulte after an unfortunate accident. Nicky Hopkins joined the band in 1969, making them the only band to officially include him in performing and recording revenues. Jim Murray left the group after their performance at the Monterey International Pop Festival. Quicksilver Messenger Service gained popularity through heavy touring on the West Coast and recorded live performances by Owsley Stanley. They eventually signed with Capitol Records in late 1967, becoming the last major San Francisco band to do so. Quicksilver Messenger Service released their self-titled debut album in 1968. It was followed by Happy Trails released in early 1969 and largely recorded live at the Fillmore East and the Fillmore West. Cipollina's highly melodic, individualistic lead guitar style, combined with Gary Duncan's driving minor scale jazzy guitar playing, resulted in a clear, notable contrast to the heavily amplified and overdriven sound of contemporaries like Cream and Jimi Hendrix. In 2003, Happy Trails was rated at number 189 in the Rolling Stone Top 500 Album Survey. Standard Quicksilver Messenger service songs included the long version of Bo Diddley's Who Do You Love on Happy Trails. Duncan left the group not long after the recording of Happy Trails, according to Dan Freeberg. And this was largely because of his escalating problems with narcotics and speed. His farewell performances were the studio recordings that ended up on Happy Trails and a final live performance with the band on New Year's Eve 1969. For their 1969 album Shady Grove, Duncan was replaced by renowned English session keyboardist Nicky Hopkins, who had played on scores of hit albums and singles by acts like The Kinks, The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, The Who, The Jeff Beck Group, and Steve Miller. Gary Duncan and Dino Valenti both returned to Quicksilver Messenger service at this time, expanding the group to a six-piece. The next two albums, Just For Love and What About Me, were recorded at the same time in Hawaii. Much of What About Me was recorded at Pacific High Recording in San Francisco and both albums were mixed at Pacific High. The record sold relatively well and produced the group's one-hit radio single, Fresh Air. John Cipollina and Nicky Hopkins departed soon after their experiences in Hawaii. Hopkins left during the Hawaii recording sessions as founding Paul Butterfield Blues Band keyboardist Mark Naftalin took his place for three cuts on What About Me. The band continued with the lineup of Gary Duncan, Greg Elmore, Dino Valenti, and David Freeberg until September 1971, when Freeberg was jailed for marijuana possession. He was replaced by Mark Ryan. Following his recent session contributions, Naftalin joined the band in earnest. This lineup recorded two commercially unsuccessful albums. 
Quicksilver from 1971 only went to number 114, and Coming Through from 1972 only peaked at number 134. And this later left the group without a recording contract. Duncan's doing time in the USA from the latter album enjoyed a fraction of FM radio play at the time while the Quicksilver track Fire Brothers was later covered by 4AD founder Ivo Watts Russell's This Mortal Coil on Filigree and Shadow in 1986. Quicksilver Messenger Service, a rock band, continued touring in the early 1970s with Valenti and Duncan as the main members. They played both headline shows and supported popular groups like the James Gang. However, the lineup changed during this period. Naftalin left the band in 1972 and was replaced by Chuck Stakes, while Harold Aceves joined as a second drummer. Ryan was fired in the same year and replaced by Roger Stanton. Stanton had previously played with Aceves in the band Poland. Another change occurred in 1974 when Stanton was replaced by Bob Flurry, a skilled guitar player from the East Coast. This lineup disbanded in 1975, and Aceves, Stanton, and Flurry later backed Barry Melton, the former guitarist of Country Joe and the Fish. In 1975, Elmore, Duncan, Valenti, Freeberg, and Chipolina reunited to record the album Solid Silver on Capitol Records. This album featured contributions from various Bay Area musicians including Nicky Hopkins, Kathy McDonald, and Pete Sears. Although Solid Silver received better commercial and critical reception than their previous albums, it only reached number 89 on the Billboard 200. The band toured briefly with Chipolina, Michael Lewis, and Skip Olsen, joining the returning trio for a few concerts in 1975. Afterward, Chipolina departed again, and the remaining members continued to perform sporadically until they eventually disbanded in 1979. After leaving Quicksilver in 1970, Chipolina formed a band called Copperhead. The lineup changed over time, but they gained attention and signed a duel with Columbia Records. However, their debut album in 1973 failed to find success, leading to Columbia refusing to release their second album and eventually causing the band's breakup. Despite the setback, Chipolina remained active, performing with various Bay Area acts such as Thunder and Lightning and Fish and Chips with Barry Melton. In 1982, he became a founding member of the Dinosaurs. Unfortunately, Chipolina passed away in 1989 at the age of 45 due to complications from emphysema. Nicky Hopkins continued his music career as a session and touring musician, collaborating with notable acts like Jefferson Airplane, The Rolling Stones, Jerry Garcia Band, and Joe Cocker. In the 1980s, he joined the Church of Scientology and attributed his recovery from substance abuse to the organization's purification rundown. However, Hopkins passed away in September 1994 due to complications from intestinal surgery related to his battle with Crohn's disease. Valenti underwent brain surgery in the late 1980s and dealt with short-term memory loss and side effects from medications. Despite these challenges, he continued to write songs and perform with musicians in Marin County until his sudden death in November 1994. In 1984, Gary Duncan revived the Quicksilver Messenger service brand as Gary Duncan's Quicksilver and released several albums with a reconstituted lineup. They also toured under different names like Quicksilver 96 in the early 2000s. Duncan's lamp included musicians like Michael Lewis, Greg Errico, Bobby Vega, John Bird, and many more. Duncan remained active until 2019 when he passed away at the age of 72. Additionally, a tribute band called Quicksilver Gold formed in 2002 but disbanded in 2004 featured the son of Dino Valenti and the brother of John Cipollina, among others. In 2006, Gary Duncan and David Freeberg launched a 40th anniversary Quicksilver celebration tour as Quicksilver Messenger Service. 
with Bobby Vega soon to be replaced by Keith Graves on bass, singer Linda Imperial, Freeberg's wife, and contributor to Quicksilver Projects before as a backup singer, and Jefferson Starship players Prairie Prince on drums and Chris Smith on keyboards. Following a series of tours, Duncan left the band in 2009. He was replaced by Peter Harris and the band continued as David Freeberg's Quicksilver Messenger Service. They are still active as of the recording of this video in the summer of 2023 and they often open for the reconstituted Jefferson Starship led by Freeberg who replaced Marty Ballin and Paul Kantner until Kantner passed away in 2016. Duncan died at age 72 on June 29, 2019 in Woodland, California after suffering a seizure and falling into a coma. And that's what happened to Quicksilver Messenger Service. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know, give me some facts about the band that I failed to mention, and let me know who I should do next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.